Hello, welcome back to the OTB channel. Today, I'm going to take a look at the latest release of Endeavor OS. And first, an apology. This is going to be an incredibly biased review. I've been using Endeavor OS on a single machine that I have for the last 14 months. I've had zero problems. I thought it was time to showcase it because, in my view, it's probably the best Arch distro out there. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So, this is a somewhat biased review I'm going to do today. You may remember going back 14 months ago, I uh, talked about my new ThinkPad Studio. Um, I'm quite lucky. I have six ThinkPads and uh, I have a little uh, Nook machine, which is here, which I'm uh, creating this video on. And uh, initially 14 months ago, I installed variants of Arch on all of the machines. This main machine has vanilla Arch, which I installed the Arch way. But I tried, you know, Arco Linux, uh, I tried Manjaro, and of course, I installed Endeavor as well. Now, over those months, uh, I, I've played around uh, with different distros. And I have to say, there aren't many distros that get to take up actual disk space on, on my real machines, on real hardware. Most of them are just a case of install, delete on VirtualBox. And as you know, I'm playing around at the moment with Slackware and with Void, which I'm very impressed with. But actually for getting work done, my main default operating system is still Arch Linux. On this main machine, it's vanilla Arch. I installed it the uh, Arch way uh, a couple of years ago. It's been solid as a rock and I've messed about with it a great deal and it's still running as sweetly as it did two years ago. But on my main laptop, which I use for work, a T440p, uh, I installed Endeavor. And I realized when I saw that the ISO, a new ISO had been put out by Endeavor in December, that actually I've had zero problems with Endeavor. It's run beautifully. And I think over the course of the last couple of years, I've started to change my mind about Arch in terms of, do I think it's suitable for new users? I've always been a little bit cautious and I, I, I've sort of said, no, I don't think it is. I think it's the sort of distro that you come to once you've had a little bit of a play with other distros. But actually, I think that's wrong now. I really feel now that Arch isn't that hard to maintain. It's solid as a rock and it's dependable, really. You hear a lot of people who, who use the likes of Debian-based distros, Ubuntu and so on, that, you know, if you want solid, dependable uh, um, operation, well, you, you, you're going to install a point-release dist distro and possibly even an LTS. And I'd agree as far as if, you, if you're running it for a server or some sort of mission-critical task. But I really don't see that that argument holds if you're just using it for desktop Linux, for your desktop system. Certainly, it's not been my experience. My experience has been, well, 14 months with Endeavor on my laptop, two years with a single installation of Arch on my Intel NUC, zero problems. Yes, you get a lot of updates. If you've got a decent internet connection, they're easy to handle. You just do it, you know, once a week. Um, and you've got a massive, massive selection of software. The AUR is incredible. You can install just about anything. And yes, it's not uh, perfect. You will get the odd issue. But let's face it, did any of you see uh, Linus Tech Tips uh, and him using Pop! OS and trying to install Steam and you saw the errors that occurred anyway there with him? Errors can occur on any system. I don't feel that Arch is 
any more unstable than any of the point release systems out there. It just has more updates. And yes, you have to be a little bit more aware of its maintenance, but that's easy. So having said that, I'm a fan of Endeavor. I think there's a lot of really good Arch-based distros out there at the moment. Um, I think Arco Linux is really good. Personally, I'm a fan of Esnix's uh, distro and particularly his installation script as well. But Endeavor is just so easy. It has a vibrant community. Um, it has a great wiki that's building up with lots of, you know, really useful articles. And it's quite near to Vanilla Arch. Yes, it has some tools and bits and pieces uh, to help you out. But if you want to run an Arch system... Endeavour, for me, pretty much has everything I want. And if I'm honest, at this stage now, as much as I like to run Vanilla Arch, I really couldn't be bothered uh, going through the Arch way install. It's not that it's difficult. It just takes up more time than I care to give it. And I think from now on, I just won't bother. Whenever I need to install Arch, I'll just use Endeavour. Not that it needs to be done very often. So with all of that said, let's have a quick look at Endeavor's webpage and then we'll go and do an installation in VirtualBox. So here we are at the Endeavor OS uh, website and you can see that their latest release is called Atlantis Neo. Um, it's a little bit strange really talking about different releases with Arch because R Arch is a rolling release rather than a point release. But even Arch itself releases updated ISOs that contain the latest package fixes. And essentially, that's pretty similar with Endeavor. Um, it's talking about all the different improvements that have been made and to Cal Calamaris, what can now be done. So, for instance... Uh, Let's pick something. Installing XFCE and i3 at the same time is imp uh, is possible again. Okay, great. Uh, for NVIDIA, using the proprietary driver, DRM mode setting enabled by default, and lots of other little bits and pieces of fixes. Um, and have a look there if you need to. You know, at the end of the day, it's a mine of information in Dev's website, and I find it's quite easy to navigate. They also uh, make great play of the fact that it's not fixed to a particular desktop environment. It has the default version, a single ISO, and you can either do an offline install, which will give you a lightly themed XFCE, or you can do an online install. And with that, you can choose from Mate, Cinnamon, Gnome, Budgie, Plasma, LXQT, or even LXDE, as a fan of GTK, and I don't really like the look of Qt apps, LXDE would be my preferred route. I know that might be quite contentious. They've also got i3 Window Manager, BSPWM, Sway, Openbox, and Qtile, uh, and you can install any of these from the installer that comes up when you... Uh, download the standard ISO. They've also got a nice wiki that contains a whole range of really useful articles. And uh, they have a forum. And the forum is pretty busy and very active. You might notice as well, if you bother to look on uh, Distro Watch, I know that's not as popular a website as it used to be. But Endeavor has been pretty much up there in the, co in the top three or four for a long time now and there's a reason for it because it is just a damn good arch based distro it seems to be battling it out with manjaro all the time uh, in terms of its placing and um, i can understand why um, manjaro though while it's a very good distro takes a slightly different approach to Endeavor in that it does actually hold some packages back. Now, if Arch was really unstable, I can see the point of doing that. 
My personal experience has been that using arch repos is absolutely fine. I can't really see the point of just holding packages back to double check them um, because I've never had an issue. Uh, and Endeavor does use the standard arch repos, so it's nearer to vanilla arch than Manjaro actually is. Um, but it's a personal preference as much as anything else. Uh, so choose your poison. So that's pretty much it. Um, download the ISO. I downloaded a BitTorrent file. It came down in a matter of minutes. I've booted it up in VirtualBox. I'll take you through what I've done. So here we are. I've uh, booted the Endeavor OS Atlantis Neo ISO in VirtualBox. Booted without a problem. I've gone to full screen and it's gone straight away to 1920 by 1080. No issues whatsoever. Initially, you know, when I first discovered Endeavor, I was a little put off by the uh, the theming and the colour scheme in particular, the, the, the deep purple but to be honest it's grown on me and i quite like it now but enough of that we'll look around the desktop once we get it installed i just want to install and uh, then we'll see where we go from there so you'll find that this welcome screen comes up right from the word go and the first button is start the installer which i'm going to do and the first thing that you get is this choice, do you want to install online or do you want to install offline? So I'm gonna choose the offline install for the first time ever this time. What that is going to give us is what you basically see on the live ISO, a lightly themed version of XFCE. If you want to do an online install, you have the option of choosing multiple desktop environments or uh, or other window managers. Needless to say, though, that's going to take longer because it's going to pull everything down from the internet. It's not just going to install packages directly from the ISO. That's the way that I normally go because I tend to go for a Marte installation, and I quite like the fact that the online installation gives you a vanilla look to uh, the desktop environment. It doesn't tend to have any theming applied to it, like this XFCE version that you have in front of you. But if you haven't got a strong internet connection or you just want to see what Endeavor has to offer and you want a quick installation, because let's face it, this is Arch, you can install what you want afterwards, go for offline, and we'll see where this takes us. And the first thing we see is this uh, terminal opening up, obviously just running checks, and we get to uh, a version of Calamaris. Okay, so let's choose British English and hit Next. It's correctly picked the time zone of London, and it's correctly picked a UK keyboard. What do I want to do? Well, I'm just going to go for something really simple here. I want to erase the disk and start from scratch. Do I want to swap? Um, no, not on a virtual machine. What I would tend to do uh, on real hardware is probably pick swap, no hibernate. I tend not to hibernate with an SSD, but I do want some swap space there. But hey, it doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned here. No swap is fine. So I'm just going to hit next, enter my name, and then my password, and rinse and repeat. I want to use the same password for the admin account, in other words, sudo. Click next, and install. So, really quick, not a lot to it. If you pick the online installation from memory, you'll get the option to install lots of additional packages. And I believe there is some option now, if you want to particularly install a package from scratch, that you can do so by editing a number of files before you start. But I'm not going to cover any of that. Let's just keep this simple. It's installing. I expect this to be really quick, and we'll come back once it's finished. 
Right, so we're back, and that was pretty painless. Took about five minutes. And as you can see on the screen, we're now at the Light DM logon screen, which, if I'm not mistaken, is using the Slick Greeter. So let's just log in. Helps if I uh, make sure the mouse is captured. There you go. And what we should see now is essentially what we saw before, that lightly themed XFCE. And that's exactly what we get. And what should be launching any second now, in fact, it's just launched, is the very friendly welcome screen, which since I last uh, installed um, Endeavor, seems to have a lot of additional options on it. Now, I should say, before um, showing you this install system, I did log in first just to do any updates, and there were 110 updates which uh, I installed. You're going to expect that because I did an offline install, so it's going to be pulling most of the packages off the ISO, and updates are going to be waiting. I luckily have a fast internet connection here, so it's not an issue, and it didn't take very long at all. I also made a couple of modifications to the Bash RC file just to help me with maintenance of the system, and I'll show you those afterwards. But uh, let's have a look. So if we go through, well, you've got a few tabs on this welcome screen. So the first one is general info, so you can get to the website, the forum, the wiki. You can make a donation. You can look up the, the latest news, etc., etc. Then after install, which is where we are now, we want to update the mirrors. So I want to make sure that we're, we're on the fastest mirrors and we're in the United Kingdom. It's already selected, so that's great. How do we want to sort it? By rate, by country, by score, etc., etc. I'm just going to leave that as is and click OK. It's going to sort all of that out and make sure that I'm pointed towards the UK mirrors, which you can see it's doing now. And it's trying to rate the different mirrors for speed to make sure that the fastest one is at the top. And once it's finished this process, I'm expecting it to ask me for uh, my pseudo password and to save. And that's exactly what it's done. And it's showing me here the mirror list that it's suggesting with quite a number of UK servers. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to save that to the mirror list. Job done. So the next thing to do, uh, once you've updated the mirrors, is to update the system. Now, I've already done this manually in the terminal, so I'm not expecting any updates to, to actually still be there. You never know with Arch, of course. But if I click on that, it will open up a terminal. And as you can see, there's nothing to do. Searching the AUR for updates as well. And again, there's nothing to do. So all good. Package cleanup configuration. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So this modifies the service that cleans up Pacman, the Pacman cache periodically. And below, I'll see the settings and their current values. How often do I want the cleaning period to automatically take place? I think weekly is fine. I, I do an update weekly and I do my maintenance weekly. So that sort of works for me. Number of package versions to keep three. You can modify that to suit yourself. Um, remove uninstalled but still pa cached packages now. I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to click cancel there. Configure your EOS update notifier. So configure and manage features of the EOS update notifier. I've never actually used this. So let's have a, have a quick look. So set the root password. Well, we know what that is. It's our admin password. We again have a terminal open. I really like the fact that it uses the terminal. Uh, and uh, literally go through here. To be honest, I'm going to just accept the defaults here because I don't see anything there that would necessarily need me to uh, um, change anything. I can schedule it. How often do I want it to check? Every 30 seconds daily, or weekly, or monthly, 
on first check after system startup. I think that's fine, you know. I'm going to set that to weekly. After I start the system, check after 30 seconds, and thereafter, you know, check weekly. That's good as far as I'm concerned. Right, where have we got to? Change display manager. So I think we're using Light DM at the moment. We are, but you get to choose from GDM, Light DM, LXDM, or SDDM. I don't want to change anything, but it is really good to, to have the option there. Change your display resolution. Well, as you can see, I'm already on 1920 by 1080. But this is great if you've just booted into the system and your screens aren't at the right resolution. It's just a quick way of making sure that that's good. Um, I'm just going to come out of that because I don't need to do anything. Endeavor OS default wallpaper. Oh, reset. Okay, well, it's already set to the default wallpaper, so I'm going to stick with that. But there's another couple of uh, wallpaper buttons here, so choose one of the Endeavor wallpapers. I think that's the one I've got already. So let's see if we can download more. It's obviously downloading something there from Community Wallpapers. So we'll see what that actually brings brings down and uh, have a little bit of a check. So I think it's probably bringing this down from a, a, a GitHub or a GitLab uh, repo. And uh, it looks like there's quite a lot of objects, up to 189 there, which... Uh, it's quite impressive, and they seem to be community wallpapers. Okay, so that took uh, a minute or so. It's asked me for my um, my password, and let's now choose one of the Endeavor wallpapers. So this is obviously the standard one that you've got that was there anyway, but we now have a whole range of different wallpapers here. Mate, Plasma, XFCE, etc., etc. Unfortunately, I can't actually view them here, um, which is a little bit annoying, but I can probably view them more generally. No, can't see them from there, but I'll tell you what, let's just have a look at desktop settings on the right-click menu and see if that's uh, any better. Right, so there is just the one there, but let me see if... I can go to one of those folders, such as the classic. Right, so there's your, your classic wallpapers, which are all, from what I can see, much of a muchness. So let's pick the other one, the community one, and open that. Now, there's, there's a lot of wallpapers uh, here. So, yeah, let's try that one. Okay, all good. So you've got options right from the word go. And let's face it, you can, you can uh, download whatever wallpaper that you want. Logs for troubleshooting. Select, create, and share troubleshooting logs when asking for help. Okay, so that's quite nice. I'm just going to cancel that. And if you want to go back to the XFCE vanilla theme, you can click on there to do it straight away. Use vanilla theme. What does it say? Da, 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 da. I'm not going to do it because it says a reboot will be required, but nevertheless, all fine. And if you want to go back to the Endeavor OS default XFCE theme, you can swap back and forward between them both. So a really useful initial welcome screen. If you go to the Assistant tab, it's a little bit, you know, um, simpler i think in terms of what it looks like and you have some useful tabs here so you just have a standard tab for updating your system updating your mirrors pack diff and meld okay logs browse all arch packages browse all aur packages let's just click on that and see what that brings us right it just takes us to the uh the Arch, uh, Arch Linux web page, XFCE information. So let's just have a look there. So these are just links to open the web browser. Okay, that's fine. Tips. 
really nice package management aur and yay hardware and network bluetooth nvidia users so let's just click on there and see what what it's actually saying for nvidia users and it takes us by the look of it to yeah to the wiki which is called discovery for endeavor os and it gives you all the various things that you might want to do if you're an nvidia user tutorial personal commands i love this i think it's great really friendly add more apps so install popular apps or browse all arch and aur packages so what do we want to do here do we want to install a firewall a kernel manager i tell you what let's install libreoffice fresh and i'll just input my password and it's saying that do we want to proceed with that yes we do do i even need to click yes i don't think i do it's just retrieving packages so we'll let it get on with that right so uh, that's all finished so i'm just going to quit from there and i think i'm now going to shut down the welcome screen and let's go and check in our menu under office and there we are we now have libreoffice fresh installed so this is pretty, pretty useful if you've never used an Arch system before or you're quite new to Linux. I think that welcome screen is really important. And it's one of those things that differentiates an Arch base distro from vanilla Arch. If you'd like a little bit of help and support and guidance initially when you're in your first kind of adventures with Arch, something like Endeavor OS, is exactly what you're going to need. Now look, at the end of the day, the reason I am such a big fan of Endeavor OS is because at heart, it is still basically Arch Linux. Um, yes, it's got a few, you know, little bits and pieces built on the top and it's got its own repo. But at the end of the day, you still maintain it just like an Arch system. And a lot of people are constantly saying, you know, oh, if you want stability, you want something like Ubuntu or Debian. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I, I, I've come to the view that that isn't really that accurate. Arch is really easy to maintain. There you go, I've said it. There is not a lot to it. This system that I'm uh, using to do my videos on, uh, I've had Vanilla Arch installed on it for two years. I've not done a reinstallation. And as I said, on my uh, laptop, on my T440P, I've had Endeavor on it for the last 14 months. I've had no issues. And if I just launch a terminal here, and I just increase the size of this slightly... Um, Let's just have a look. So zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. We'll just make that a little bit bigger. What I do to maintain my Arch system is really straightforward. Every week, and normally on this system, my main system, I'll do it just before I do the video. And on my laptop, I'll do it on a Monday morning. I issue three commands. The first one is sudo pacman. S Y U. That goes out and it looks for updates and asks me for my password and it should tell me I'm up to date. And there you go, it's searching away, there's nothing to do. I then update my AUR packages. Exactly the same command, just with yay, and you don't need sudo there. It's not going to find anything to do because I've already done it. So all good. I then, and this is not absolutely necessary, especially as Endeavor has a tool there to clean your package cache, but I tend to do it manually. I tend to just hit yay dash SCC, which will ask me, do you want to remove all files from cache? I'm going to say yes. Do you want to remove unused repositories? No. Do you want to remove all AUR packages from the cache? Yes maintenance done that is essentially all i've done 
for the last year or more on a weekly basis to maintain my Arch systems. Yes, on occasion, I'll also run a few other commands to clean up orphans and clean up the thumbnail cache. But you're going to be doing that on any system that you run. It doesn't have to be an Arch system. But essentially, it doesn't need to be difficult. In fact, some people I know don't like the syntax that Arch uses. But again, this isn't necessarily a big issue. All you need to do is create a few little aliases. And the way I do this, I'm just going to open Nano here and open up the Bash RC file. And I did this earlier. And let me just come down to the bottom and I'll show you what I've done. I've created three aliases at the bottom called Pack Up, Yay Up, and Clean Up. And together, they basically run the Pac Man command, the Yay command, and the Yay minus SCC command to clean up the package cache. So let me come out of there. All I need to do uh, when I'm looking at this now, if I wanted to update uh, Pac Man packages, I type Pack Up. It asks for my password, and it'll tell me there's nothing to do. Yay up. There is nothing to do. Clean up. Do I want to remove all files? Yes. Repositories? No. All AUR packages? Yes. Exit. Maintenance finished. What is so hard about that? Anyway, that's my little rant about Arch over and done with. It's really simple to maintain. So, um, it's, it's a nice-looking system. Um, I quite like the way the menu is. Uh, let's go to the Settings Manager. Let's just have a look at what you've got in terms of themes installed out of the box. So, at the moment, you've got the Arc, Arc, Dark, and Arc, Darker theme. So let me open up uh, a file manager so you can see what that looks like. So that looks fine as far as I'm concerned. I could obviously change it around. I prefer the art dark to the art darker uh, simply because it makes everything dark. What icons are we using? Arc XD. Never heard of that before, but I quite like it. And obviously it's dead simple to install other themes, and we're new using Notosons regular for the default font and Monospace regular for the standard. Guys, there's not a lot to an XFCE system. I quite like the default theming here, but you're not wedded to it. You can change XFCE to whatever you want. Personally, um, as you know, I use Window Managers, DWM, so it doesn't really matter to me if I've got a default theme. I do tend to install a desktop environment as well. I tend to go for Mate, simply because it installs all your Xorg stuff out of the box, so I don't have to worry about that. And occasionally when I'm doing a review, some of the window managers I use don't play with VirtualBox quite as nicely as I would like, so I will sometimes default back to XFCE or to Mate. But as far as a standard desktop environment is concerned, this is beautiful. You're going to have a pretty much arch system here with a little bit of help and additional tools added. What more could you want? Let's go and have a chat. Right, so that's Endeavor OS. Um, I think it's a brilliant Arch-based uh, distro. Uh, I would have no qualms whatsoever in recommending it to anyone. And that's based on 14 months constant use. I don't think there's anything else that I can say. Um, as you can see, I'm a fan. So that's it for today, really. Um, I do just want to say one thing. A few people have mentioned in the comments in, in on my last couple of videos that they've obviously joined us quite, quite recently. OTB, why have you got a motorbike in your living room? Um, well, it's not my living room. What you actually see here is uh, essentially a fancy shed. It's an outbuilding at the bottom of my garden. Um, there would be no way 
the she who must be obeyed, Mrs. OTB, would allow for me to put my motorbike in our living room. Uh, she's not best pleased that it's in here anyway, I should say. But no, th- so this is a shed. Th- this is a shed that also happens to have my computer in. So don't think I've got it in the house. I quite like it in the house, but no, no, that's not going to happen. So guys, that were that was something on Endeavour. Um, what I'm waiting for with bated breath is and i'm really hoping this is going to be the next video but we'll have to see is a slackware release and if there is a slackware release well please be assured that will be my priority to run through that and to to highlight some of its main features that's still a little bit of an unknown at the moment so i'm keeping my fingers crossed other than that though guys thanks very much for watching as usual, if you'd like to support the channel, go to patreon.com uh, forward slash old tech bloke, as these wonderful people that you see here have done. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, chuck me a, a small amount each month. Or go to my website and buy me a pint. You don't have to do that, of course. What I would like you to do, though, is like and subscribe. We're over the 17,000 mark now. I'd ideally like to crack the 20k mark uh, within the next f three to four months, if possible. But we'll see. Uh, 20k is pretty stunning, really. Um, I never thought I'd get this far. But now that we're, we're in touching distance of it, um, I want to get there. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next week.